So greetings to you all in the name of our most holy Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the word of God says, uh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. You can say this along with me. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. So the fact that we all are seated here this day shows that God has been faithful in all our lives. In spite of all our situations, God has brought us all here. He is faithful, right? Amen. So, uh, today morning, let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 26. Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 26. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. So now this isn't a new passage for any of us. All of us probably know it is the Aaronic blessing. And in fact, even last Sunday, we sang a song that was related to this verse, which was very beautiful. But um, my, what I would like to share today is how does this blessing that was given to the people of Israel so many years ago apply to us today? So uh, before we go into the word, let's bow our heads in prayer. I am not worthy, holy God, that thou should come to me but speak a word, most gracious word, that sets the people free. Father God, we come into your presence, Lord. This day, we thank you for each and every one of us who are gathered here, everyone watching us online, Lord. We just pray, Father, that none of us hear the words of a man, Lord Jesus, but all of us hear your word, Father. Only what you want to speak to us, Lord, let that be spoken alone, Father. Lord, we commit this word that you have given us into your hand, Lord Jesus. Bless it and multiply it for our benefit, Lord. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, moving on to this passage. Uh, this blessing was given by God to Moses, and it was required that Aaron, which is the high priest of that time, he blessed the people of Israel with these words. He was asked to use these words and bless the people of Israel. So, today I would like to divide this passage into three parts to share with you that this is actually prophetic in nature. This is a prophetic blessing, and that the blessings that are spoken about here are not just, you know, materialistic blessings, but actually way more supernatural and divine. So let's begin with verse 24. The Lord bless you and keep you. Now to understand what bless and keep really means, we have to probably go back into the Old Testament and a brief history of what happens in the Old Testament. So let's start with our father Abraham. Now what did God tell Abraham? God told Abraham to come out of his country and out of the land that he knew because God was going to him give him another land. So he moves out of his country and he settles in this land that God promises him. And then his son Isaac and then his grandson Jacob, all of them stay in that land for a certain period of time until a famine comes, which we all know about, right? The famine comes and uh, Jacob and all his people, they have to move to Egypt for sustenance, where Joseph, his son, is prime minister by God's divine uh, intervention, right? Now we know that Jacob and Joseph, this is just a brief, uh, you know, summary of what the Old Testament really says. Now Jacob and Joseph, both of them, them die, and the new Pharaoh that comes, he doesn't remember Joseph, he doesn't remember the good that he did for Egypt, and so the people of Israel that are now multi, that have now multiplied, now they are all under slavery, and they are slaves in Egypt for 400 years, right? So. This happens and then God sends Moses, right? And with great signs and wonders, we know the 10 plagues and with great signs and wonders, God redeems the people and brings them out of Egypt and starts their journey into the promised land. Now we know how many uh, difficult things that they faced on the way to the promised land, right? They had a lot of hunger, thirst, starvation, a lot of things, but uh, they did reach the promised land, right? And at the entrance to the promised land, because of their lack of faith in the God that brought them this far, what happens? They are sent back into the wilderness to wander for another 40 years, right? But however, God remains faithful still, and then he raises up Joshua to bring down the walls of Jericho, where the promised land lies. 
and at that time these Israelites enter into the promised land and that actually marks the beginning, the official entry of the Israelites back into their nation, right? Now, uh, God fulfills his promise and they get the land and they face a lot of opposition from the surrounding countries that, with armies that are large, uh, larger than theirs and God, however, gives them victory. But we know the cycle that continues in the book of Judges where God gives them victory but then they fall into sin so God sends people to rule over them and they cry out to God again and uh, God uh, you know, delivers them but then they fall into sin again. We see that cycle happening in Judges, right? Yeah. Now, uh, the entire book of Judges is over and now fast forward, the Israelites, they ask for a king and they get King Saul. But King Saul turns out to be wicked so God sends them David, a man after his own heart, and his son Solomon takes his place. But because of Solomon's sin, the land again gets divided into two, uh, Israel and Judah, right? Now, at this time, we know that the wickedness of the people knows no bounds. Like, they are absolutely wicked, and God sends them prophets, right? God sends them so many prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all of them, to warn them that if they don't repent and turn from their wickedness, the land is going to be captured, and every one of them are going to go into exile. God kept warning them, but the people of Israel, as usual, they did not listen, and the lands of both Israel and Judah are captured, and the people go into exile, right? We know the story. But God is still faithful, right? He, he was always still faithful. And even though all these people went into exile, God brought them back into their land after 70 years of exile in Babylon. So uh, these people, they, they came back uh, into the land. And the point is God has been faithful. The journey of the Israelites, it doesn't stop here. There are some accounts of the Maccabees and stuff in the Deuterocanonical books. We even have the continuation of Israel's uh, you know, subjection to Rome and these kind of stories in the New Testament even. But the point is God has been faithful. God has kept them, blessed them with the land and kept them in the land, right? Now... Why is this important to us? Like, remember the key words, verse 24, bless and keep, right? So why is this uh, God blessing the Israelites with the land and keeping, in the, keeping them in the land, why is that important for us? Now, all throughout the Old Testament, one thing is very clear, that there is this man coming, this God-man, you know, this, this Messiah that is going to deliver the people of Israel. That's what the Israelites believe, that there is this man coming and he is going to deliver this, the people. And we know that this man is no ordinary man. He's not just a man. Isaiah and all the prophets make it very clear that, you know, he is the mighty God, the everlasting uh, father, right? He's not just a man. So this is the unanimous mystery of the Old Testament. So we know this man is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know that now. Amen. So the Son of God, he needed a people by which he could enter into this world. That is the reason the Lord blessed and kept the people of Israel in the land. Because Jesus Christ couldn't just drop out of heaven and just come like randomly. He had to come through to truly know what humanity is and to to truly take on human flesh, God had to come in human flesh through a race, right? And that race was the Jews. So we see that by blessing, by blessing the people of Israel uh, with the land and also keeping them in the land, we see that God has blessed not, I mean, he has kept his promise to Abraham to, uh, that all nations of the earth will be blessed by him. And, be, and that, is, that blessing applies to us also because the Messiah that came through the Jews is the Messiah of us too, right? Amen. So he is. He, so this is this is the first part of that blessing, verse twenty-four, which is prophetic because it paves the way for the coming of the Son of Man. I hope it's clear. For, yeah. Now uh, let's go on to the next part, which is verse twenty-five. Okay. Now, the Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. This is the next part of the verse. So, how did God really make His face shine on us? How was God truly gracious to us. This is what we will see. Uh, if we look at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2. People who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Yes, amen. So, 
see the, what we have to understand here is the moment jesus christ the son of god the son of man he condensed himself and he came into this earth as a man this earth that was covered with a cloud of darkness right this earth it light shone on this earth jesus christ is the light that darkness couldn't and cannot ever comprehend amen, amen. You see all of us mankind you know we were all dying in our sins we had no hope in this world but the moment jesus christ stepped into this world god became the god that was once unreachable and unapproachable he became close to us he became light into our darkness right next john chapter 1 verse 17 For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. My friends, God has been gracious to us. When, when he said the Lord uh, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you, God has been gracious to us by giving us the most precious gift that God can ever give, the gift of his only begotten son. Amen. So, when he came you know when jesus christ came as a propitiation for our sins that is the moment we knew what grace truly was the next verse and the last i would like to share is second corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 for it is the god who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of god in the face of jesus christ my friends uh, when we look at Jesus Christ he came as a propitiation for not only our sins but of the sins of the whole world he came as our uh, remedy to sin right but looking at our own lives looking at our own individual lives will also help us understand that we have truly been recipients of this blessing how because god has illuminated our hearts on a personal level with his light right so uh, this god we were all in darkness and this god he shone into our hearts and he you know expel the darkness from our hearts right he is the one who made us see the foolishness of sin he is the one who caused us to repent and believe in him and he is the one who showed us the better way that is the only way to salvation which is jesus christ amen so we see that this verse 25 is prophetic as it foretells both light and grace that is coming and we know that that light and grace is none other than our lord and savior jesus christ amen Now we move on to the last and the final part of the verse which is verse 26 The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace this is the verse Now to better understand this let us look at Jeremiah chapter 18 verse 17 I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity My friends one thing we need to realize is before Jesus Christ came into this world God's face was naturally inclined against us like that's all that we can expect right we are we were conceived in sin in our mother's womb we knew nothing apart from sin the word of god says we drink iniquity like water that is how evil and sinful we were but and we who are adam's offspring we have no hope to stand before someone so holy like god the holy mighty god that knew no sin we stand no chance in front of this god right but so you know we have to understand that god's face was naturally inclined against us romans chapter 3 verses 23 says for all have sinned and they and all fall short of the glory of god so we have to realize that all that we deserved was wrath and judgment of god but listen to this very carefully my friends but god he turned his face towards us the moment he turned his face away from his own son jesus christ on that cross when god satisfied the wrath when jesus christ satisfied the wrath of god god turned his face towards us his face that was once inclined against us it was turned towards us the moment jesus christ died on that cross amen when jesus christ the second adam by his obedience died on that cross he made peace with man and god and he mended the relationship that was destroyed by the first adam by the disobedience of the first adam so overall my friends we can see that this blessing that god had given the high priest aaron to bless the people of israel with is a prophetic blessing and it is not just for the people of israel 
but for all who call on the name of the last and the better high priest who has gone into the holy of holies and represented us to the father we are all blessed by this this blessing right this is how we are blessed by it so just to summarize first the lord blessed and kept the people of israel in their land to pave the way for the messiah to come verse 24 verse 25 the lord made his face shine upon us when the light of the world stepped down and illuminated our hearts to listen to his voice right amazing grace it came through jesus christ and finally verse 26 on the cross when the wrath of god was satisfied god turned his face towards us and christ the prince of peace he made peace with us and god the peace that we did not have before that amen don't we serve a great mighty matchless god amen I am ending with just the reminder that today the church celebrates the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. My friends, when we look at the cross, we understand how Jesus Christ loved us then. But when we look at this altar, where the body and the blood of Christ are so freely given to us, we understand how Christ loves us now. So as we celebrate and partake of the most holy body and blood of Christ, let us remember Christ who said in John chapter 6 verses 53, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have life within you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word that you have given us, Lord. We thank you, Father, for this blessing that was given to Aaron, Lord. So many years ago, the high priest, Father, you came as the high priest that cannot be destroyed, Father. You came, Lord Jesus, to fulfill this prophetic blessing in our life, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, that uh, you have paid the price in full for us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the work on the cross, Lord Jesus, a work that no man can ever undo, Lord Jesus, the, a work that the, the gates of hell cannot prevail against, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the cross, Father. We thank you for the redemption that comes in your name, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father, for each and every one of us here, Lord, as we uh, listen to your word, Lord Jesus, as we partake of the Holy Communion, Lord. Help us to understand the gift of your body and blood given to us, Lord Jesus, so freely, Father. And help us to understand, Lord Jesus, that you are our blessing, Father. You coming into our lives is the greatest blessing that we have ever received, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done in our lives. We thank you, Father, for you are our redemption and our hope, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. May your will be done alone in our life god thank you for answering our prayers in jesus name we pray in the Gata is on the Sham, third chair to the Nangal Ganagro, my donor wishes to know. But if a channel is very each channel, subscribe with the Langal Diawai, Ipatane, on the subscribe area, is on the Sham, material Kudi on the forward is the Nangal Kidanagro, my Nangal, third chair to Adamatlorkum, Ranagro, my Tiruan, other Karna, my Tiru. God bless you.